getting into that show wasn't an easy thing for me to agree to do in the first place because I had by that time decided that I, I really wanted to give a shot at the theater and I uh, was planning on graduating from high school and trying to get into someplace like Northwestern or NYU or someplace good. And this was really throwing a monkey wrench into the plans because what if I go on this show and I'm no good and then I will have embarrassed myself in front of millions of people and I can never go back again. So we kind of made a, a pact really, my mother and I seriously, that if, if that happened, like if I if were on the show and after the first few weeks, the, the feeling was, well, these kids are not cutting it, that they would, she, please just write me out in some way, send me away to college, whatever you have to do, and just save, save me from the embarrassment of that. So they said that they would, and um, thank God that didn't happen. So I, I ended up staying there and learning quite a lot in six years. And my character basically was um, me. I mean, in, instead of getting a script and having to say, oh, is that what the character is? The writers came to the house and interviewed Desi and I and based the characters on what they called two typical teenagers. <laughs> Little did they know. But uh, it, was, it was us, and it was our sense of being, our sensibility, our sense of humor. So I guess I, I just wanted to be somebody who wasn't stupid. You know, I mean, I, there was enough times when I had to roll my eyes and go, I'm going upstairs to do my homework, but I think my character was not a fool, which was nice. She was a, just a savvy 15-year-old kid who uh, thought her mother was a little odd from time to time, and she respected her mother. She respected her Uncle Harry. He now became Uncle Harry, Gail Gordon. And Desi was pretty much Desi, you know, handsome, kind of a little full of himself because he knows he's handsome, guy who plays the drums. I picked the name Kim. They let us pick our own names. They said that they told us, Mom said, I've picked the character's name will be Carter. There's a reason for that. You know that old story about every name she ever had on television was an A-R name? Uh, no. Because she felt that her real success started when she married Desi Arnaz, A-R-N-A-Z. So they became the Ricardos. They changed it to Ricardos, and then she was Carmichael. And then she said, okay, now my name is Carter, wow. Lucy Carter. So I knew it was going to be Carter, and we had to come up with our names. So we picked the most obscure names in the world, Kim Carter and Craig Carter. Too cute for TV. The premise was she is, uh, a, I guess that she was, a, was she a widow again? I think so. She was a widow again, raising two kids, and her, uh, her deceased husband's brother, Harrison Otis Carter, was to watch over us and watch over her to make sure that she didn't go through all the money that was left, which there wasn't much of. And um, he, he had to give us a good education and whatnot. And he owned the Carter's Unique Employment Agency. So he gave my mother a job so that she could put the kids through school and whatnot. And that's, they ran a, a, an employment agency, which gave birth to a lot of funny ideas for shows. And the show lasted, uh, was it? Six four, seasons. Six seasons, okay. For the same reason, because right. that's enough for syndication. But also by that time, Desi was only there two seasons, then he went off and did movies and okay. had a whole other career. And I stayed the full six seasons, but in that last season, I was already going away to try my luck at Summer Stock, again because of Vivian Vance, who was a guest star on our show almost every year. And one year she said to me, what are you doing now on your hiatuses? What are you, are you just hanging out? What? I said, yeah, I go to Mexico and I go to Hawaii. And, and she said, no, no, no. Don't get stuck on a television series, you know, typecast in one role for the rest of your life. I thought, what is she talking about? She had a great career on television. And then I went, oh, I get it. You've been Ethel Mertz forever, huh? Great. So I took her at her word and I started auditioning for Summer Stock and they did Cabaret and Once Upon a Mattress and Little Abner and shows like that out in, you know, Warren, Ohio and San Bernardino and places like that and got my feet wet. And then I had an opportunity to study with people like David Craig and, and uh, was asked to audition for Michael Bennett, the National Company of Seesaw, the musical of Two for the Seesaw. Biggest break I ever had and I got the part. And I was gonna be touring for six months on the road. And it was right at that sixth season. Mm -hmm. So mom figured, well, of course you have to go do that. And I don't think I'm going to go if it's the sixth season, Desi's not here, and now Lucy's not here, so she quit.
What I learned, you know, is a whole, okay. you could write a book about just what you learned about being on a television set. And those were all practical, you know, lights, camera, sound, blocking, rehearsal. But I think the most important thing I came away with was uh, how to behave with other people to get the job done in a timely manner. There were so many professional people that worked on that set. I mean, really smart, good people who did their job well, they were kind, they didn't throw hissy fits. And that's why we got to do that show, Bam Bam Bam, like we did, and be at Mateo's at 9.30 on Thursday night for dinner, you know? Uh, and then all of a sudden, somebody else would show up. One of the guest stars would come in one week, and the whole thing would kind of go like this. And you'd say, wow, what happened? It's, how come it's taking us so long? Why is everybody in such a bad mood? And you'd realize it's because somebody is really sucking all the air out of the room. Somebody's making it all about them. Somebody's blaming everybody else, coming in not prepared, starting fight, whatever, you know, drunk. Any number of things that really upset the apple cart. And I just learned very quickly that that's not what you're gonna do. You're not gonna do that. So if anything, my, my, my way of acting with other people uh, has set a high, very high standard and, and I don't screw around because I like to get to Mateo's by 9.30.